Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Honor to him the blessed one, the worthy one the fully enlightened one, my utmost respect to the perfectly enlightened Samasam Buddha, the noble doctrine of the Buddha, and the noble Mahasangha, the, the disciples of the Buddha. Dear Dhamma friends, welcome to our weekly guest lecture series, week number 12. Topic for today is titled Motivation in Psychology and Three Types of Tanha, Presented by our special guest speaker, Mr. Ranil Kumara Nayaki. Please mark your calendar every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific time to get more benefited from this guest lecture series. Kindly check with Dhamma USA YouTube channel, Facebook page, and groups for more updates. You can post your questions on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and we will answer them at the end of the talk. A brief introduction of our guest, guest speaker today, Mr. Ranil. Mr. Ranil earned Master of Psychology from University of Mysore, Karnataka, India, and Master of Philosophy from University of Kalania, Sri Lanka. Mr. Ranil has been dedicating his career as a lecturer in psychology at many universities in Sri Lanka. You can also find a more depth and detailed biography of Mr. Ranil at our website damaUSA.org. Without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Ranil to start his presentation. Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, actually, I'm very, uh, I, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dhamma USA and uh, Bhante Sumitra for inviting me to this brief discussion on motivation in psychology and the concept of Tanha in Buddhism. So at the beginning, actually, I would like to apologize for uh, any uh, communication barriers that will be made due to the uh, my English pronunciation and uh, English understanding, as I'm not a native English speaker. So we'll go to the uh, slides. Uh, so when it comes to the concept of motivation and the uh, concepts of uh, three concepts of Tanha in Buddhism, actually uh, approach that I will, I am going to adopt uh, should uh, be given some kind of a brief uh, introduction about on which grounds do we have to understand the concept of motivation and the concept of three type of uh, tanha. So when it comes to psychology or as uh, common to the many of the sciences, many of the modern sciences and uh, social sciences, the boundaries are very clear cut. So what is the scope? Uh, what is the, uh, what are the concepts that have been discussed, where they are applied are very clear cut. But when it comes to the uh, Buddhism and uh, the uh, spiritual understanding, uh, defining exact boundaries is very uh, complex. And also uh, when we are going to establish the uh, relationship between the sciences and Buddhism also presenting uh, some complex scenario in the uh, exact boundaries between these two. So uh, due to this reason, the same thing can also be applied to the uh, understanding of psychology in the light of Buddhism as well as the Buddhism in the light of psychology. So because the uh, boundaries are not that much clear cut. So we, before we are proceeding into our discussion, actually it is very essential to understand this is the background 
that we have to compare Buddhism and psychology. Okay, uh, so the comparison with the modern sciences or modern uh, disciplines with the uh, Buddhism is actually not a new one. So such comparisons have uh, been centered upon but not limited to philosophy, psychology, physics, cosmology, evolution, management, economics, and some other sciences. So again, when it comes to the comparison between Buddhism or understanding uh, the Buddhism in the light of psychology or understanding the psychology in the light of Buddhism, we can see several explanations uh, specific to uh, diverse concepts in psychology can be seen. They may be consciousness because uh, some scientists and some uh, scholars compare the uh, explanation of consciousness in the uh, Buddhism in terms of psychology and personality, perception, psychopathology and psychotherapy also. So today my discussion will be on how the explanations on motivation in psychology can be compared with the three types of tanha explained in Buddhism or Buddhist teachings. So when it comes to uh, the concept of tanha in Buddhism, actually it uh, derives from tanha, where the tan means a place and ha means getting attached or feels. So we are getting attached to a place. The place may not be actually a, uh, it may or may not be actually a, uh, something that is intact or something that can that we can touch. It can be even a phenomena, it can be a material object. So the what, what is the thing that is happening is we are getting attached to that place or phenomena or object. So this is what we mean by tanha. So uh, how do we get attached? So we attach via greed, hate or ignorance. So uh, when it comes, this is not uh, this is not pronounced as tanha. This is tanha, like in the thunder. Okay, so tanha literally means craving or the thirst. And according to the early Buddhist explanation, it keeps us bound to the samsaric predicament or samsara. That means rebirth. So there is a bonding that takes place when we get attached to the. Uh, objects or phenomena through the craving or tanha. So that is how the uh, cycle of re rebirth take place. So in, when it comes to the uh, Dhammapada, uh, the greater attention is paid to this as the causation of arising dukkha or rebirth. For example, there are four noble uh, truths in Buddhism. Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirodhamarga. Dukkha is the suffering. Samudaya is the cause of Dukkha and Nirodha is the way to uh, reduce Dukkha, way to uh, eliminate, alleviate Dukkha and Marga is the path to do that. So in that uh, discourse of uh, Buddhism in the about the uh, Four Noble Truths, the great attention is to a great attention is paid to explain this causation arising uh, dukkha or rebirth. So it is the craving which cause to arise dukkha. So in the science of psychology, the concept of motivation actually mean by what drives the human behavior. There is no exact reference to the uh, cycle of the birth or rebirth. Generally, when it is taken into the con consideration of the current life, it explains about what the person is driven, how the person is propelled into action. So this is the meaning behind motivation. So this can also be considered uh, uh, with the similar grounds with the concept of Tanha. So Tanha in Buddhism somewhat equals to the concept of motivation. That is why we are going to... Uh, make kind of a bridging between these concepts. So we can see some of the similarities as well as 
differences in these explanations. For example, uh, when it comes to the concept of tanha, the Buddhism established the cause and effect relationship. It is not created by uh, invisible power, almighty God. So the cycle of life, the life, uh, birth and rebirth, actually a effect of a kind of a causation. So our actions, it may be mental action, it may be physical actions, they are functioning as the cause. So the outcome is rebirth, the cycle of the birth. So the process associated is the tanha. So Buddhism clearly established the cause and effect relationship. So this can be even be seen in psychology, though the scope they touch is different. Even in psychology, motivation is explained as what causes human to be in the action. So it is also again a cause and effect relationship. So both Buddhist explanation in Tanha as well as the scientific explanation in, uh, uh, about motivation in psychology both establish the cause and effect relationship. Yet there are some differences. The time frame that is addressed in Buddhism transcends the present life. But in modern psychology, it doesn't. So Buddhism is speak about the cycle of life. It can uh, begin from a previous life. It can go to the future life. But when it comes to the psychology, it mainly speaks about the current life, the present action, the observable life. Okay. So this is kind of a difference in the explanation of Tanha in uh, Buddhism and motivation in modern psychology. And uh, when it comes to Buddhism, it describes the concept of Tanha from a holistic point of view, kind of a synthetic approach. It uh, gather, it ac accumulate all uh, causal factors. It is a detailed explanation. But uh, when it comes to the motivation, uh, it is very difficult for us to understand, according, at least according to my knowledge, whether there is a holistic way of addressing about the motivation. Uh, and also, when it comes to the motivation explanation in modern psychology, there is no single theory that explains everything about motivation. Different theories explain the concept of motivation differently. Some focus on the uh, functioning of basic drives, some focus on the uh, motivation in the workplace. So like it is, uh, uh, it can be seen as explanation that exists as pieces. So the uh, concept of motivation in uh, modern psychology is more analytical. The concept of motivation in Buddhism is more synthetic. Even the analytical component can be seen. So, again, when it comes to the motivation in modern psychology or scientific psychology, it is the study of how biological, psychological, environmental variables contribute to motivation. That is what actually uh, about how the brain, mind, body contribute to the motivation, how mental processes contribute how material incentives or goals contribute to the motivation in the individual. But when, it, when, but when it comes to the Buddhism, the Buddhist concept of tanha or craving, which is similar to the motivation, states that how the attachment of craving for biological or psychological environmental variables lead to the wandering in the samsara. So in psychology, it is how actually the environmental variables contribute to action. How biological variables contribute to action. How other variables contribute to action. When it comes to Buddhism, how, how the attachment to such biological variables, attachment to such <coughs> psychological variables and attachment to such environmental variables leads to action. So, uh, 
though the uh, concept is closely associated, the way they explain in two different uh, domains are uh, varying. So this is actually kind of a noticeable thing in the when we compare the concept of motivation with the concept of tanha. So in modern psychology, uh, the motivation is explained as to be motivated means to be moved into action. So we are induced into action or thought by either the push of a motive or pull of an incentive or goal towards some end state. Here motive is understood as an internal disposition that pushes an individual towards desired end state where the motive is satisfied. And a goal is defined as cognitive representation of the desired outcome that individual attempts to achieve. But when it comes to Buddhism, for example, as uh, the Lord Buddha explained in uh, his final sermon, he understood that the four noble truths, uh, Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirodha, Marga, so all these are the causation that function the person into action. So there is similarity. The mo motivation in mo modern psychology explains that, okay, motivation is the process that lead, in, lead the person into action. So when it comes to Buddhist teaching about uh, Four Noble Truth, yeah, there are different processes. There are uh, maybe uh, birth and rebirth, maybe uh, our desire to experience pleasant and uh, avoid unpleasant things. All these are associated with this craving finally which lead to action. Action is everything that comes under birth and rebirth. So there is a similar explanation here also. So uh, when it comes to psychology, it explains motivation in terms of the process and outcome. However, in Buddhism, it explains the root cause of the suffering or life cycle. So this is the distinction that can be seen in Buddhist explanation in Tanha or craving and modern psychological explanation in, uh, about motivation. So if we are further going to understand uh, how motivation is seen in modern psychology and uh, how the concept of tanha, similar to motivation, is seen in the early Buddhism, actually, we can uh, get an example from Maslow's theory. The concept of motivation in uh, modern psychology is not limited to Maslow, but Maslow's theory is one of the uh, highly influential theory since the uh, 1960s. So Maslow presented that, Abraham Maslow, he presented that the motivation in the human take place as a hierarchy where there are needs. In, it, uh, in this uh, needs hierarchy, then an individual is attempting to satisfy each type of need and his action is, his or motivation is driven in an upward moving manner. Initially satisfying the phys physiological needs or basic needs, then to satisfy safety needs, then social or belongingness needs, then emotion needs, sorry, esteem needs, and finally self actualization related needs. So uh, when we look at holistically at this explanation given by Maslow's theory, the ultimate outcome is to ensure, ensure the survival. Someone can question that. How can we group the higher order needs such as esteem needs and self-actualization as survival needs? According to my opinion, yeah, they are also survival needs, but they ensure your psychological survival. 
ensure ensure your non material survival whereas the low order needs mostly physiological and safety needs they ensure your physiological needs or physical needs so when it comes to the concept of tanha even in bodhisam why craving take place because we want to ensure our survival you will need you will uh, see uh, in detail explanation about the three type of tanha so when we holistically look at this maslow's theory the needs satisfaction by the individual is actually in order to ensure our physical and non material survival or psychological survival when it comes to buddhist concept of tanha again it is about ensuring our survival through the process of craving so in buddhist teaching when it comes to the explanation of the second uh, truth of four noble truths it is about the cause of suffering or the origin of suffering so it may be uh, associated with any action that we uh, perform so some of the buddhist text explain it uh it is caused by uh, negative actions such as killing stealing and lying and also some other explanations exist about how negative mental states that motivate into the negative action such as desire hatred and ignorance so uh when we superficially look at this explanation of tanha in buddhism someone case uh, someone can argue that it is uh, more pessimistic but when we carefully understand this we can consider it is uh, not actually pessimistic it is an a detailed understanding about the cause of rebirth in modern psychology they emphasize the serial order of individual circumstances that take place in the process of motivation whereas the buddhist explanation on motivation is the determinant factor for the chain of circumstances that gives rise to the birth rebirth cycle so there are similarities as well as differences so okay then i will be moving on to discuss about three types of tanha so as i have explained already the uh, discussion on three type of tanha is closely associated with buddhist discourse on four noble truths actually the second of the four noble truths is about the uh the causation of dukkha or causation of suffering so in this discourse the lord buddha has explained there are three different types of tanha or craving they are kama tanha or the sensual craving sensual pleasure bhava tanha craving for existence and vibhava tanha craving for non existence this tripartite division of tanha is actually fitting more to the modern psychologies concept of motivation than general meaning of motivation for example in the concept of motivation the modern psychology present different theories they present nearly a dozen of theories maslow's is one of them there are some other theories like uh, hersberg two factor theory goal setting theory equity theory so there are various theories in modern psychology that have presented the idea about the concept of motivation so when we look at the concept of tanha actually its explanation is more matching with the explanations given in each theories of each theory of motivation rather than the general idea of motivation for example when we go to explain about the sensual craving or kama tanha how does sensual craving arise 
in an individual. So it results in uh, our six senses. So according to Buddhism, there are six senses, not five. In modern psychology and modern uh, physiology, we identify there are five senses. Uh, visual, auditory, olfactory, uh, tactile, gustatory. So these are the five sensations in modern uh, science. But when it comes to Buddhism, there are six senses, such as uh, uh, even the Vijnana is one of them. So the uh, experiences that result in from these six senses leads to six modes of craving. We call it as Tanha Kaya. What are those six types of uh, six modes of craving? Rupa tanha, that result from visual attachment, visual, the, the visual cravings. Shabda tanha, that result due to the auditory attachment. Getting attached or uh, develop a craving about a pleasant noise or pleasant, unpleasant noise, pleasant or unpleasant noise. You develop an attachment. Shabda tanha. Ganda tanha. It is about olfaction. Smell. We develop craving towards a smell. We see uh, we see a, uh, a smell that is coming from food as uh, pleasant, satisfying me. According to Buddhism, it is also leading us to keep bound in the samsara. Rasatanha, about the taste, the cravings that we develop about ta uh, taste. Potabhatanha and Dhammatanha. Potabha means the uh, vision, particular part perspectives, then Dhamma. So usually when it comes to this uh, sensual craving or Kamatanha, uh, what we can see, uh, what we can see is they are leading to the dukkha satya or suffering. Kama tanha is leading to suffering. It keep us bound in the samsaric cycle. So sensual cra craving is keeping us bound in this birth rebirth cycle. So this is the Buddhist explanation. What we see as pleasant, what we hear as pleasant, what we taste as pleasant, what we smell as pleasant, and the tactile sensations which, ex which we experience as pleasant, all these lead to keep us bound in the samsara. It called the ultimate re uh, result is rebirth, which Buddha explained as dukkha. So in the uh, explanation about causation of Dukkha, so sensual craving is the first type that comes under tripartite division. So this concept of sensual craving actually, we can identify in the light of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs in his uh, motivation theory. For example, at the bottom of the hierarchy, what we are trying to satisfy is physiological needs, then safety needs, then social or belongingness needs, then esteem needs, final self-actualization. According to the modern psychological explanation, yeah, it comes from a constructive perspective. It is about the development of the person. It is about the growth of the person. But actually, from a Buddhist perspective, all these outcomes are arising from the sensual pressure or the sensual craving, kamatanha, finally, which will lead to the cycle of birth and rebirth. So uh, even the concept of 
Maslow's hierarchy of needs are clearly telling with the explanation given in Buddhism as Kama Tanha. Then when it comes to the modern psychological theories like Herzberg's two-factor theory of motivation. For example, Herzberg present a theory called two-factor theory of motivation where he emphasized the uh, motivation in the workplace in an organizational context. He speak about two types of uh, factors. One is hygiene factors and other is motivators or growth factors. Hygiene factors are the things present in a workplace such as financial benefits, appreciation, then uh, uh, bonus, other uh, incentives given in the workplace. So Herzberg say them as hygiene factors or maintenance factors. So when it comes to the other type of factors, according to Herzberg, they are growth factors. They are usually the internal motivators, such as sense of achievement, sense of competition, sense of accomplishment. What Herzberg says is actually the person is satisfied if the growth factors are present. The person is uh, dissatisfied if hygiene factors are not present. If the hygiene factors are present, the person is not satisfied, but it is kind of a state where there is no satisfaction. It is not a state of dissatisfaction. It is a state of no satisfaction if the hygiene factors are present. But person will only be satisfied when there are growth factors. This is the summary of the uh, Herzberg theory of motivation. If we explain this in terms of uh, the concept of sensual craving or karma tanha in Buddhism, we can notice that whether it is hygiene factors or whether it is growth factors all finally lead to keep us bound in the sansara. So that is why I said Buddhist explanation about motivation is more holistic. Whereas in psychology, it is about emphasizing the individual components which are pertinent to the current life. The concepts they describe is more similar, but the way they describe is different. The uh, perspective they describe is different. So that is the uniqueness in Buddhist explanation. So, as I said, the karma tanha arise, can arise from six types of senses and the uh, craving for those arising from those six types of senses. For example, I will uh, come to one, the craving for pleasant visible forms, rupa tanha. Rupa means what we see, the images. We are getting attached to the images, what we see, what, what we experience through our visual organ. So this lead to keep us bound in the birth, rebirth cycle. The same thing happens in the other senses also. I don't have it that much time to go individual to each concept. Okay, the next explanation about the type of tanna is or the next type of tanna is bhava tanha craving for becoming or existence what is actually this mean bhava means becoming or being this is the craving to become something or someone in this life as well as the urge to contribute to exist in the future life associated with the wrong view of life being an eternal or immoral, immortal entity. It will include craving to be happy, craving to be rich, craving to be famous, powerful, popular and even attractive. For example, when we see our life as something that exists eternally, we are trying to accumulate things. 
we are trying to gather wealth. We are trying to gather say, recognition. We are going to earn uh, prestige. Why? Because we see the life as eternal. Life as something that exists for an uh, entire period of time. But that's not true according to Buddhism. So this is called Bhavatanna. We are getting attached to the view that there is a becoming or there is a being. So that view is actually a wrong view that leads again to the birth, rebirth cycle. When we see all theories of motivation, almost all theories of motivation in modern psychology, they speak about how individuals' actions are directed towards becoming in the present life. But Buddhism speaks that from a perspective of how that causation can cause to keep us bound in the entire birth and rebirth cycle. So this is the difference in explanation of Bhavatana in Buddhism and the explanation of motivation. Maybe Maslow's theory, maybe other theories in modern psychology. For example, when we crave for our existence, it is associated with the belief about our ego or soul. There is some uh, someone called myself. The self is existing. So which, we, uh, which will finally uh, lead to five aggregates. So this is how they keep us in the samsaric cycle. So according to Buddhism, there is no something uh, as myself. Myself is a uh, uh, way that uh, we assign to the particular phenomena that we perceive. Finally leading to the birth rebirth cycle. So this is, there is a huge distinction between Buddhist explanation about motivation and the modern psychological explanations about motivation uh, from this kind of perspective. Because the causal factor for our experiences that are arising from my vision, Bhavatanha, is actually more complex in Buddhist explanation than the simplicity, simplicistic view in modern psychology. Because modern psychology did not emphasize about the uh, past life, present life. It gathered information about how current action is led to the individual outcomes. Whereas in the Buddhism, they speak about all of our actions are the results of the cause and effect relationship that determine our birth, rebirth cycle. So the third type of tanha that is explained in the Buddhism is Vibhava tanha. This is called craving for non-becoming or non-existence. So Bhavatanna is craving for existence. We mean that some, uh, the life is existing. There is something called being. But Vibhavatanna is craving for non-existence. That is also not good. That is also keeping us bound to the samsari. Because when we uh, see annihilation or non-existence as uh, something there should be, we are getting attached to that view. Again, it leads to be born in this uh, samsaric cycle. So craving for non-existence or self-annihilation is the desire to get rid of something, including the desire to not exist after death. Compare how different spiritual or religious explanations exist. Some say there is no life after death. Some say, uh, uh, some you say you have to enjoy this life. There is not something 
uh, after your life. Your entire current life is the one that determines everything. So what is the ultimate outcome? You engage in actions. You develop craving. You develop greed. You develop lust. So all these again keep bound you in the samsaric cycle. All these lead to be reborn in the samsara. So the view of non, uh, non-existence or the self-annihilation is again type of tanha which causes you the dukkha, which causes you the suffering. So due to this reason, in the early Buddhist explanation, the craving for non-becoming or non-existence or in other words, vibhava tanha is part of dukkha arising causal organization. So this is closely associated with the presence of an ego identity. That there is myself, there is my matter, like in the Bhavatanha, again becoming the part of the rebirth. So when we compare, this is the modern concept of motivation in psychology. We can explain the uh, descriptions given about the concept of frustration. When does actually frustration take place? According to the modern motivation explanation in psychology, when uh, when an individual is propelled by or driven by a motive, need or an urge to achieve something, he is engaging something which is called goal-directed behavior. This goal-directed behavior is not achieved always. Why? There are barriers. There are blockages. For example, I want to earn money, but there can be a competitor. I want to go for a position in the uh, place that I work. There can be a competitor. There can be challenges. I want to eat my food. There can be someone who want to share it. There can be someone who need a share of it. So all of our actions can have possible barriers. So what is the result? There are two types of possibilities. One is engaging in constructive behavior. So when we see there is a block for our goal-directed behavior, we change the strategies that we employ and we engage in constructive behavior. The other result is frustration. Frustration is actually a negative psychological experience. We may withdraw from the situation or we can engage in aggression. Frustration leads to aggression. Sometimes frustration may lead to constructive behavior, but most of the time it leads to aggression or withdrawal. What do we do when we are frustrated? According to the modern psychological explanation, when we are frustrated, self-annihilation can happen, which can exist uh, killing ourselves or self-harm or destruction even of the others. According to Buddhist explanation, these are the components of Vibhavatana. We are engaging in annihilation self-annihilation, we are engaging in destructive behavior because we see the present life is the only one. The present life is the one we need to satisfy. So that is uh, what again leads to the common outcome of birth and rebirth in the samsaric cycle. So 
when it comes to uh, <clears throat> Buddhist explanation of tanha and its three types kama tanha, sensual craving, bhava tanha, the craving for existence, and vibhava tanha, craving for non existence. All these concepts can be clearly matched with their different theoretical explanations given in the modern psychology, psychology's motivation concept, rather than the general idea behind the motivation. So this can be uh, discussed even with the other theories. For example, when we think about the equity theory of motivation, Again, it is about the organizational functioning, the motivation in the workplace, equity theory. It says that when a person is unequally treated, they may develop the sense that the person who I, I compare gets more benefits than myself. Myself and the other person, the comparing object, contribute same to the organization, have similar qualifications, but I am unequally treated. So what is interesting is, in this theory, equity theory of motivation, they discuss about what will happen what behaviors will be demonstrated by the individual when they feel that they are unequally treated. This is not limited to actually the uh, organizational context. This is what we can even see in the general life. When we develop the sense that I am unequally treated, what will happen? We may experience frustration. We may engage in problem solving behavior. We may change our communications with others. We may alternate our uh, perspectives. We may uh, be motivated to uh, work more hard. Or we may be motivated to escape from working. All these can happen. But according to the Buddhist explanation, these are results that can happen due to the craving for non-existent because we see the uh, this is the life uh, this is the only life that we have to satisfy so when it comes to the frustration and negative actions that can happen that can take place when the person is unequally treated actually they can highly comparable with the early Buddhist explanation about Vibhava Tantra. Okay. So, when it comes to the summary of what I discussed today, the Buddhist explanation of craving is actually more holistic but detailed. The scope they address is not limited to the present life. They see the entire lives are component of the samsaric cycle. Every action through the process of craving or tantra leads to be born in another life. However, in psychology, though there are individual comparisons are possible, some theories are matching more with the Buddhist explanation with the concept of Tanha. The modern psychology emphasizes on the individual factors which leads person into action in the present life. The scope is very limited. 
because it touches the science. So these are the differences that I can see. Okay, with that, I will explain. Uh, I will uh, sum up my discussion. So this is kind of a very brief discussion. Actually, that is why I explained at the beginning. Establishing boundaries in Buddhism is very difficult. Establishing the boundaries between psychology and Buddhism is also even difficult. So my knowledge is not sufficient for that. I might be able to manage a psychological discussion more uh, confidently, but I am not confident with discussing uh, Buddhist explanations because it is associated with number of discourses. Okay, uh, it is the time for question and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Raniel, for sharing today. Um, I think we have some questions. Uh, questions from Alia. Is it possible to manage our needs by not craving? Can you please provide a day-to-day -day example? Yeah, actually, uh, again, I have to go to the uh, concept of Four Noble Truths. So it present uh, in Buddhism. Uh, Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirodha, Marga. Nirodha is managing the or alleviating the craving. Marga is the path for that. So in Buddhist discourse, uh, there are uh, the uh, ultimate path is Nibbana or Nirvana. So when you apply this to the present life, it can mostly be about spending a righteous life. How can we spend a righteous life? It is about uh, develop, uh, developing, adopting a behavior, which is which, which the uh, Buddha has explained in the uh, eightfold path. Maybe some uh, sati like uh, right vision, some uh, vayam, right action. So eightfold uh, path in the Buddhism explain how to adopt the way of righteous life into the present life or the day-to-day -day action. So Buddhist uh, explanation about how do we uh, spend a righteous life is actually adhering to the Buddhist concept. They may be uh, uh, not harming others. They may be not killing. They may be uh, Uh, meditating, they may be uh, engaging in uh, other righteous actions. So this is how we can adopt in the daily life the Buddhist explanations. Okay. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Alia. Uh, the next question that Alia has is let's see. what are the type of social factors that can also be considered to be the cause of craving? Actually, uh, when it comes to the uh, causal factors, uh, it, they may not they may be social factors they may be individual factors all the uh, all the actions that the human perform for example uh, think about an individual is attached to the recognition from the others an individual is attached to the uh, pleasant communication between uh, myself and the others an individual is attached to the uh, status maintained uh, in the uh, face of the others. All these social factors can finally lead to craving. All, all interpersonal interactions. That is why most of the uh, uh, monks uh, in the early Buddhist uh, period, they went to the uh, retreats and meditated. 
because uh, when we are interacting with others when we are uh, getting attached to the social interactions what happens is it develops craving which arises from uh, five senses when there are interactions again it causes to please our organs sensory organs so all the social factors all social interactions i cannot pinpoint uh, only 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 to a limited uh, type of factors but all interactions all interpersonal interactions which makes me to develop a view that this is pleasing me or this is not pleasing me they are part of the craving thank you okay um the last one uh, that alia has as a buddhist how can we reduce or eliminate tanha in life actually the uh, only way of uh, alleviating tanha is achieving nibbana through the process of uh, meditation satipatthana so achieving nibbana we can manage uh, as you ask in the daily life and here adopting a certain uh, daily practices but ultimately if we want to uh, alleviate tanha because tanha is a natural process as as uh, we are humans it is common to all of us so it is part of our natural life the only way is nibbana to totally alleviate the tanha but Uh, we can somewhat manage adopting a righteous way in our current life so basically we need to learn how to let go uh, of things right mr ranil so that way um, we don't really have to deal with this the craving yeah. of a specific things right um another another dama friend ask um if uh for anybody out there who wants to have access of your slides is that going to be available for public or uh, yeah i will share with uh, bante sumit okay obviously it is possible <laughs> perhaps it's going to be available on the dama usa website um Another question: Any ways to cope up with tanha in modern psychology? Ah, uh, yeah. When it comes to modern psychology, actually, they emphasize how to motivate the individual to achieve a constructive life. So, constructive life may be giving a uh, uh, can be achieved by giving incentives externally, giving rewards. uh they may be material rewards or non material like praising uh for example in the organizations or even in the schools the per- persons are given some re- uh, material rewards or even praises recognition but when we see this in the light of buddhism actually they are again developing the craving because when we get something from outside maybe recognition maybe something material my craving increases finally keep me bound with the sansara so what we see these are the ways to manage craving in the present life from a modern psychological perspective is actually a barrier for our samsarik freedom samsarik freedom in the what is this course there are a lot of uh, ways of uh, motivating an in- individual in the uh, modern psychological uh, explanations there are theories of motivation they have different techniques how to treat people how to give incentives how to schedule the ways of reinforcement for example when it comes to the behaviorism behavioristic theories they discuss about 
how to give a uh, reinforcement reinforcement means uh providing something uh that leads person to the action of removing some barrier again leads to the constructive action reinforcements but when we look at them from a buddhist perspective that is not constructive as it is explained in psychology so that is the difference okay um i think we don't have anything else here i think i think we can conclude mr raniel today's talk um okay. thank you very much with that dama friends we conclude today's guest lecture and we look forward to deliver more interesting topics like this in the coming weeks please contact us if you have a great and useful topics that you would like to share with us. I would like to invoke blessings upon Mr. Ranil for kindly accepting our invitation for today's talk. May you always you, be yeah. well, happy, and healthy. Let's also keep our palms together close to our heart and pray that the power of all the dana, sila, bawana activities that we all have performed during our lifetime and during our whole course of samsara, become one united power and may it share with all the celestial beings. May all the wonderful celestial beings, including respectful brahmas and devas, and all sentient beings receive this merit and share this merit and be well, happy, and healthy wherever they are. May all your departed ones also receive this merit and be well, happy, healthy, safe, wherever they are. May all of us be able to live life peacefully, comfortably, and with good health. May all of us and all sentient beings be able to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana, the absolute peace and happiness at the end of our samsara. Bawa tu saba mangalam rakantu saba dewata, saba buddha nubawena sada soti bawantute. Bawa tu saba mangalam rakantu saba dewata. Saba dama nu bawena sada soti bawantute. Bawa tu saba mangalam rakantu saba dewata. Saba sangha nu bawena sada soti bawantute. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Have a great day and see you all again next week at the same time. Thank you, Mr. Anil. Thank you much. <clears throat>